Storytelling is a part of Black culture. It runs through our veins. Our ancestors told stories to teach us lessons, protect us, and to learn our history. As members of a Black Greek letter organization, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, we felt that it was imperative to delve deeper into this form of Black art, storytelling. We want to practice the principle of Sankofa, of reaching back into our past and using that knowledge to influence our future. Well, my first name, I don't think has that much significance. My mom said that one of her friends named her daughter Janelle and she was like, I love that name. <laughs> but my middle name, Cherokee, uh, I got that because I was born in a Grand Jeep Cherokee. My mom went into labor and my dad was like, oh, we gotta get you to the hospital. And then by the time they got there, the nurse was like, oh, we're gonna have to do this right here, right now. So I don't know what my middle name was supposed to be, but my parents right then were like, her middle name is gonna be Cherokee because she was born in a Grand Jeep Cherokee. So <laughs> my dad was like having a struggle with like having kids. Like he could have kids, like he had a son before me, but like he passed. So then um, he really wanted a daughter, so he prayed to Angel Gabriel, and now I'm here, so my name is Gabriella. <laughs> what my mom came up with my name in the hospital, the girl in the room next to her had a four-year-old daughter named Serenity, and my name was gonna actually be named, Shata I was gonna actually be named Shatarian, and then, not good. Then, <laughs> and then my mom seen this four-year-old girl, and she was like, that's such a pretty name, and like literally at the hospital, she changed my name, and that's why my name is Serenity, and it meant peace, and she was like, oh, what a peaceful baby, and yeah, there we go. My first name um, means Lioness of God in Hebrew. Um, I don't know if there is any significance to my middle name, which is Brene, but my first name, they, they put some thoughts, quite a bit of thought into that one. I grew up in a very small town, in a single parent household with a huge family, just like surrounded by love and care all the time. So that kind of drives me forward in the sense that I want to be a nurse and I feel that would be un wrong of me to not give the love that I received growing up to other people. So that kind of is what drives me forward, just to like know that my family was always there to support me. I've always been surrounded by a lot of people and supporting others, so I ha that's what drives me forward overall. Um, I would have to say my family. My sister recently had a baby, you know, baby Micah, and he just keeps me so like motivated because I know in the future like my dream is to have like a house where we all live. I think what motivates me most is that I have four older siblings and so I'm constantly trying to catch up with them, trying to, I guess, accomplish all the things that they have accomplished in their lives and so I'm running this long race like after them trying to be like, am I going to make it here? Am I not going to make it here? Where am I going to end up? But I think that mostly my siblings are my drive for what I do. Say one of my core values is faith. Um, I feel like without faith, I would not be where I'm at. I wouldn't, I would have stopped believing in myself a long time ago. So I'd have to say that it's like at the center of myself, faith is right there. My values are rooted in commitment and also dependability. And I say this because if I say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it and I don't change my mind about it. And also if you need me there for you, I'm gonna be there for you. So I very much so value my word and I want people to like have value with my word. So that's where that comes from. Kindness. Kindness is a big value of mine. Um, you never know what people are going through and a smile, treating people with respect, helping someone out can make their day. Ambition. Um, you have to have, for me, you have to have big dreams. You have to want to reach the stars, go beyond, even if you're scared. So meeting anyone that's ambitious, regardless of what their goals in life are, is a really big value of mine. Okay, so I feel like personally my family history is kind of confusing because some of the stuff I found out recently, but both of my grandfathers on both sides are mixed. Um, they both married African-American women. Um, both African-American women on that side are mixed with Indian, Blackfoot Indian, and Cherokee Indian. So um, came together, you know, had mom and dad, and then there's me, so. Um, for one, I'm Haitian, as I said before. 
And Haiti comes from a line of people who are just strong in personality and strong in character. Um, we're the first black nation to win their independence in the Western Hemisphere. Um, so we hold a lot of pride in that. Um, and I think in my family separately, we kind of have this courage to do what others thought was impossible and that's to succeed. Family, like I said, I grew up in a very small town and kind of we've been there since slavery pretty much on my mom's side at least um, in Manatee County. Everyone has kind of been there and since slaves we pretty much live in the city and then I think my father's family is from Louisiana. It's kind of the same situation, just you know, American and kind of have been brought over from Africa, did the whole thing and that's where we are and kind of my family settled in there and never really moved away. And I feel like every Haitian parent has this story and I don't know why, but my dad always tells me the story about when he was like younger and he was in school that he used to have to walk like 10 miles to get to school and that he didn't have shoes to wear and that he would have to, he had like one set of clothes, like one set of uniforms. And so he'd have to go home, walk the 12 miles, wash it, let it dry outside and then like wear it again the next day. And so I think that perseverance and that kind of like integrity and hard work to like keep going and wanting to make something of yourself kind of motivates me now because I'm like, by any means necessary, I will get there and nothing can stop me. So when I was 16, I had to interview my great grandfather for a project. He was actually born in the 30s. And one of the stories he told me was in Manatee County, the KKK used to actually ride around to try to scare them growing up. And he told me in such a casual manner, he was like, oh yeah, they were just scaring us. But to me, the way that he said it in such a casual way just like scared me that not so long ago, my own great grandfather was experiencing racism on just like a hateful way in his everyday life. It was just normal for people to just drive around with crosses burning and KKK outfits on. Just that was just normal for him. So that story really impacted me just to know that I've we've come so far and I'm just so grateful that I've had the opportunity to kind of live in a in a world where I'd have to experience that. And the one that comes to mind is a story my mom constantly told me growing up. So her favorite um, artist is the Clark Singers. They're a big gospel group uh, they're all sisters they all grew up singing which is kind of like her and her sisters they all grew up singing and she told me when I was younger um, I would cry a lot and she would try to like put me to sleep and she'd play like this baby music but it would make me cry like even louder but then she'd put on the Clark sisters and it would make me just fall sound asleep and it impacted me in a way because I feel like I'm very mature and I've always been very mature at such a young age and I've always been so eager and ambitious to do things ahead of my time. I even came into the world early. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go with a story my dad told me when he first immigrated to the States. So he was telling me that when he first got to the States, like in the 80s, so Reagan era, um, he was living in Miami with his mom and he was just talking about how he had to hustle. Like he had to share a car with his mom. He would make a joke out of having to like give her basically his whole paycheck and even though he's like 20 something years old he's still living with his mom and he would just like work i forgot the name of the restaurants but he was working at like taco bell um a luggage place eventually at the airport and he would just consistently talk about how he was tired but make a joke out of it um and i think the reason it stuck with me is because it was not only funny but it was the perseverance aspect of it the fact that you can make light out of such a hard situation and still be the man that you, that he is today. When I learned that story about my mom, I didn't learn it until I was about the age of five when she got a random phone call from Haiti and it was her son that had finally found her. Um, so it kind of seeing my mom's like face lit up with this kind of loss, this lost hope that she had and kind of finding her son again was something that just was so precious to me and her finally telling me that story. I completely saw my mom in like a new light. What's your story? What's your story? What's your story? We'd love to hear your story. Please submit your responses to the anchor link in the at UFAKA's bio on Instagram as a message and sign our consent form. See you tomorrow.